Welcome to the physics topic, forces less than two, friction and resistance. So we're going to look at friction first and you've got to have a look at these images here and have a think about whether friction is acting in these images. So you've got a person cycling, a child on a slide, uh, someone on a climbing wall and a skier. So taking the cyclist, yes, friction will be acting. Friction be, can be acting in several places on that image. So the brakes against the tyres, if they break, and also the tyres as they are moving along the surface of the road. There'll be friction between the tyre and the road. Um, on the slide, there will be the, the smoother the slide, the less friction there will be, but there will be some friction depending on what clothing the child is wearing as to whether that child goes really fast or it slows the child down. Um, in the climbing picture, depending on the type of shoes that that climber is wearing, will depend on how much friction there is between each of the holds and the shoe. The more grip on the shoes, the more friction there will be. And the skier, the base of the skis, uh, connecting with the snow will have very, very little friction, but the poles will be shaped in such a way they can catch against the snow so they can slow down if necessary. And the same that they can turn the position of the skis to create a bit of friction to slow them down. But overall, probably, a lot less friction in the picture of um, the skier than, say, for example, the picture with the cyclist. Right, so you need to have an understanding of what friction is. And it stops two objects sliding past one another. There are examples of good and bad friction, which we will talk about in a moment. But you need to know that friction acts in the opposite direction to the movement of an object. That's how it ends up slowing it down. So the more friction there is, the slower it will go. You can see by the tread on the tyres there. Um, as tyres get worn, that tread goes, which means uh, the friction between the tyre and the road is less. There's less grip. So smoother surfaces, smoother surfaces have less friction and rougher surfaces will have more friction. So looking at the runner there, uh, the combination of the tread on the base of the trainers and the surface that they're running on will depend on how much friction there is. And you can reduce friction. And we'll talk about that in a moment. What's important to know is the uh, good points of friction and bad points of friction. So if we look at the good points of friction, so friction will allow grip between the tyres and the road. That'll stop you from slipping around. It will also prevent accidents. It will allow you to slow down. Um, and it allows you to start and stop. Uh, friction between brake pads, okay, will enable you to slow down as well. It's not just the tyres on the road. Bad points of friction can be that you could slow down when it's not wanted. It's not always required for you to slow down. Uh, it can also prevent you from going too fast if you want to increase your speed. And it can cause objects to warm up. And because it's causing the objects to warm up, it will also waste energy. Now, along with friction, um, we need to have a little look at air resistance, which is another factor that can slow an object down. So uh usually happens when the object is moving and it can also be known as drag and um, very simply to overcome air resistance you can streamline the object once the object streamlined it will move through the air more easily really good example of this is the british cycling team that you would have seen at the olympics you've got a uh, a cartoon image at the bottom there, but they, uh, the weight of their bikes, the shape of the helmets that they wear, even down to the outfit that they wear, the zips that they use, uh, where it covers on the body, enables them to become more streamlined and in turn enables them to get faster and faster and faster. And over the years, if you look back at previous Olympics, you will see how the cycling kit has changed over time. 
um, from all countries, it all evolves slightly differently, but you can see the progression that's been made in streamlining those cyclists. And all of that is to reduce air resistance. Now, another type of resistance we need to look at is water resistance. Uh, it will slow an object down again, and also one of the ways of overcoming it will be for the object to become more streamlined. So um, if the object's moving through water, it can be slowed by water resistance. Again, this can be called drag. And like I mentioned, it, to overcome the water resistance, the object can become more streamlined. The boat at the bottom there is a really good example of that. If you look at the shape of the front of that boat, how pointed and smooth it is, that has become more streamlined to cut through the water so there is less water resistance. It can move quicker and smoother through the water. Now, um, certain organisms, for example, the dolphin over, over evolu through evolution have evolved over time to become more streamlined, to move faster so they can move through that water faster. Um, and it reduces the amount of resistance, which means they can move quicker. Now, when talking about this, you need to have an understanding of the effects of air resistance. One of the examples we like you to know about is what happens when a parachutist jumps out of an aeroplane. Um, and you need to know at different points what is going on and be able to identify it and label it in diagrams as well. So as the person leaves the plane, gravity is the force pulling them down to the ground. So they haven't opened their parachute at this point. So they've just jumped out of the plane and gravity is causing them to fall really fast towards the ground. And the faster they fall, gradually the air resistance will increase as well. They will feel that upon their body. Then what will happen is, like on the right hand side of this picture, the parachute will be opened. So the air resistance is increased because you've got a surface area there that can catch that air and cause some drag. So they are beginning to slow down as they fall because the air resistance has increased. Now, because the parachute is much larger, the effect of the air resistance is now acting against the force of gravity, which is what slows them. Eventually, what will happen is the person will fall at a steady speed. So the air resistance and the effect of gravity are equal. Um, this is quite often the point you see if it's recorded of someone jumping out of a plane where they're enjoying it, sailing through the air uh, with the parachute open. So finally what happens is as the person lands, they're stationary and that's because the force between the ground and their weight is balanced. So they're not moving anymore the forces acting are balanced, they become stationary. And the effect of air resistance now is so much less. So like I already mentioned, you'll have to be able to label diagrams in this. You can have a go at this on the worksheet that's attached to this lesson, and you need to be able to explain what is going on at the different stages and what, what is acting when, and when air resistance is having its biggest effect on the parachutist.